Hello everyone, this is PK Entertainment and we are back again and here now we have another video for you and we're going to talk about the Obi-Wan Kenobi series and ask whether it will be a worthwhile entry within modern day or Disney Star Wars and whether there's any remaining value or investment within a story surrounding Obi-Wan. So as I'm sure everybody who knows by now, Obi-Wan Kenobi is the latest Disney Plus Star Wars television show after both The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett and you can check out my reviews within the channel of both of those shows and I'll leave some links within the description. Now the Obi-Wan Kenobi series is due for release on May the 25th 2022 on Disney Plus of course and it will consist of six episodes. Now of course the story of the series will take place 10 years after the end of Revenge of the Sith where we saw Obi-Wan defeat Anakin Skywalker and was handed his newborn son Luke Skywalker to newly adopted parents. The series assumedly will work through all the way up to the events of episode 4 A New Hope where Obi-Wan in his elderly years eventually meets the teenager Luke Skywalker and starts to show him the ways of the Force. So we'll quickly talk about the teaser trailer that was recently released online on Wednesday the 9th of March and overall I thought it was okay. We had of course that epic John Williams music, the Jewel of the Fates theme so irresistible and iconic as always and certainly the tone of this trailer promises a larger scope and a serious intent about it. Now I am hoping that this will be a far more expansive series in terms of the world building rather than the more desert orientated stories that we saw with both The Mandalorian and Boba Fett. Now yes we did get those earlier scenes of Obi-Wan wandering in the desert and of course we had those first shots where we see him overlooking a younger Luke Skywalker but that was to be expected as I mentioned before. But what was even more interesting about this trailer was indeed the appearance of the Inquisitors. And in this shot here, it very much seems that this is the Grand Inquisitor. Now, for anybody who doesn't know who the Inquisitors are, they were a group of warriors who were force sensitive, but they weren't Sith. But they are assembled by Emperor Palpatine to hunt down any remaining Jedi who survived the Order 66 initiative that we saw, of course, from both Revenge of the Sith and Star Wars The Clone Wars 7th season. The Inquisitors themselves were created and originated from the Star Wars Rebels animated series way back in 2014. So again, this is another continued crossover that we're seeing from the animated universe of Star Wars with characters being put into live action. And of course, what we saw that both in The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. So will we indeed see much more of a chase story with Obi-Wan being hunted down by the Inquisitors that would definitely provide a far more urgent and tense narrative than what we had with the previous shows? And as usual, we get all of the great visual shots and spaceship battles and wielding of lightsabers. And we can't deny that with all of the three shows, at least, the production levels are of all of a high standard, which again, we would expect to see that given these Disney Plus shows. So just to talk about the series overall and what we know already, it was confirmed some while ago that Hayden Christensen will be reprising his role as Anakin stroke Darth Vader throughout the series. And I'm almost certain that we will see an appearance from Ahsoka in some way, shape or form, as we all know, she had a very strong connection to Anakin and Obi-Wan in the Clone Wars series. And one thing to alert to is that if Ahsoka does appear, it can't be Rosario Dawson because she's too old, right? She appeared, of course, halfway through the second season of The Mandalorian and, of course, the book of Boba Fett. So both of those shows took place after Return of Jedi. So there's no way that Ahsoka would be that old when making an appearance in this show here. Now, there's been no confirmation that Ahsoka will appear. As with all of these shows now, it's very much the way that they are starting to use the series to set up more future installments within the Disney Plus shows later on down the line. And of course, we already saw that with the Book of Boba Fett. And on the plus side, Ewan McGregor still looks very good as Obi-Wan. He still looks the same for the most part. And again, his age is perfect in keeping with the timeline that this show takes place in. So the real question is, as I mentioned before, is there any more value in the Obi-Wan story? Is there anything within this show's outline that's really worth investing in? Now, I've said in previous videos covering Star Wars, I'm not really sure there is. If we look at it overall, we have really covered the most significant parts of Obi-Wan's story. From working with Qui-Gon and meeting Luke to eventually fighting Maul in The Phantom Menace, training Anakin and fighting Count Dooku in Attack of the Clones, then, of course, defeating Anakin and going on to exile and handing over Luke and Leia to adopted parents at the end of Revenge of the Sith. 
Even in Clone Wars and Rebels, we covered various battles of Darth Maul and also his relationships with the likes of Ahsoka and also Satine as well. So there's been so much that has been covered throughout Obi-Wan's life already. Is there anything more that the show can provide us with that's really interesting, that's truly important and compelling? In terms of the timeline of the whole mythology, what more can the series offer us that's of real importance? If you remember in episode 4, Obi-Wan made no reference at all to his time between looking after Luke from a distance on Tatooine. There were no characters that appeared within the original trilogy or indeed the Mandalorian or the Book of Boba Fett that have made any reference points to meeting somebody called Obi-Wan in the past. Now that's not to say that we can't get any compelling storylines or exciting episodes but in terms of the overall mythology of Star Wars is it really that important what happens to Obi-Wan between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope? I'm really not sure it is. Now, of course, there is that potentially dangerous territory of upsetting established canon if indeed you start to put anything significant within this part of the story. Indeed, after all of the fallout within the Disney Star Wars trilogy, the last thing they want to do here is upset fans even more so by tinkering with anything to do with Obi-Wan's heritage throughout the entire franchise. Now, of course, one of the biggest concerns that fans have had is indeed the return of Vader and his overall involvement. Many, including myself, feel that having them meet again in the self-proclaimed rematch of the century by Kathleen Kennedy so soon after Revenge of the Sith really undercuts the impact of their encounter within A New Hope. Now, whilst it could be argued that logistically, there's no reason why the two couldn't have met together again before A New Hope, we saw a similar narrative, as I mentioned before, with the fact that Obi-Wan encountered Darth Maul several times after the events of The Phantom Menace. But I just feel it does take away a lot of that weight again from the moment within A New Hope. Now, when we talked about Vader being involved, I initially thought it would indeed be in flashbacks, where we would see many scenes of Obi-Wan again working together with Anakin, showing us some extra elements that we didn't see without Revenge of the Sith. And again, this would have been fine, again, just establishing the true connection between both Obi-Wan and Anakin. But if they fight again, I just think it would be really disappointing. And once again, like DC's overuse of the Joker, we're yet again going back to using Darth Vader once more. So many times now, this villain has been used when we go back from Rogue One. And of course, we saw him at the end of Clone Wars. And of course, he made an appearance in Rebels coming across Ahsoka as well. You just wonder at this point, when will we be able to let go of Vader and start moving forward with new villains and new characters? Of course, I understand that Darth Vader is still probably the most iconic character within all of Star Wars, maybe just in terms of appearance, but there has to be a point now surely where we're just reusing the character again and again and again. We've already explored all the key elements without Darth Vader's story. Now of course I'm not trying to be overly negative here, I understand that a lot of Star Wars fans will be super hyped to see Obi-Wan back again, seeing Ewan McGregor back in the role, and many Star Wars fans will be very excited that we're getting much more of these filler episodes if you like, filling in certain gaps between already the established storylines so if you are excited for these type of storylines then more power to you of course but for me personally i just feel that star wars is very much a franchise that is stuck in the past you know we've seen this a lot with all of the announced shows the fact that of course the book of boba fett we brought back that character from the empire strikes back for some odd reason we need to see what cassian andor was up to in the andor series which amazingly has already been renewed for a season two even though we haven't yet seen season one and of course we're getting the acolyte which i believe will be taking place hundreds of years before these events and will be tapping into very much of the old republic so the real question to ask is alongside obi-wan is when are we going to move forward when are we actually going to start investing a lot more in newer characters fresher stories and fresher narratives rather than going back and exploring the likes of Obi-Wan where for me personally there isn't really any more that we can do with the character there isn't really any more that we can explore that's truly significant and as I mentioned before yes we could easily see some smaller intimate stories that are very tense very exciting we know whatever happens that Obi-Wan makes it right Whatever dangerous situations that he's involved in, we always know that he's going to come out at the end because he has to, because he later on has to meet up with Luke later on within A New Hope. So already you're taking away a lot of the high stakes in the Jeopardy. So from my point of view, the only real point of an Obi-Wan series existing is to maybe set up other shows in the future, very much like what we got similarly with both The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett. 
Now, if those shows turn out to be good, then fine. But if they don't turn out to be good, then once again, it's going to bring up the old question of how we're just using these iconic characters just for the sake of branching out more content for your streaming platform. And I just think that characters like Obi-Wan shouldn't be used like that as they have far more importance and significance within the Star Wars trilogy. So I'm not quite sure that this series will have any particular value but of course we won't be able to confirm anything until the show comes to air on the 25th of march 2022 so those are my overall thoughts and feelings on the obi-wan kenobi show and the teaser trailer that was recently released online let me know what you think in the comments below if you are indeed a hardcore star wars fan does this show really excite you are you very happy to see you mcgregor back in the role are you very excited to see obi-wan lock horns with darth vader or are you like me do you think that darth vader is being overused and do you think that moment will undercut their meeting within a new hope and do you feel overall that the franchise of star wars should really be moving forward and trying newer characters and new storylines if it is indeed to sustain itself for the many future years going ahead let me know what you think within the comments and of course when obi-wan does arrive on screens i will of course provide premiere reviews season reviews and if there are any episode standouts within the show i'll provide breakdowns for all of those as well so look out for those within the channel as well please also hit and like the subscription buttons and notifications so i can provide you with more high quality content like this in the future but that's it for now take care of yourselves stay safe distances and I will see you very, very soon.